The star attractions will be the Blades aerobatic display team. We sent Rihanna Mills along for a taster of what they can do. There are no problems here with volcanic ash or the staff going on strike. But passengers like me going up with the Blades aerobatic team do, of course, face another few twists. Miles is my pilot, ex RAF and former Red Arrow. Everyone that works here um, are former four RAF fast jet pilots, former Red Arrows, um, and so we all think in a similar sort of way uh, and produce, hopefully, um, you know, the world-class display that we, that we do. I'm petrified, I'm excited, um, but just wish me luck. I'll see you later. All strapped in and we were off. I think probably now I can admit that actually I'm a little bit scared of flying, but when you're up here and you're seeing this and experiencing something that most people would never get to experience, I think it's worth keeping my fear for. Maybe I'd spoken too soon. Oh! I've never seen the world like that before! Oh my god! I hated flying until today, but I'll never look at it the same way again. So that's pretty cool, isn't it? With my stomach in one piece, we head back. But Miles and the team do it all again at the South End Air Show this weekend. Some synchronised, you know, high performance gyroscopic aerobatics. It's a real stunning display. That was the most amazing thing I have ever done. Now I love my job but these guys must have the best job in the world and I think officially they may have cured my fear of flying as well. What else do I do with my bank holiday now to stop that? <laughs> Rhiannon Mills, Anglia News at Sywell in Northamptonshire. <laughs> We'll have a find of what she's on, won't we? <laughs> now, the Tornado Steam locomotive made its first journey through the region today on its way to Norwich. The newly built replica steam locomotive was on a special charter trip from Liverpool Street. The train left Norwich Station this afternoon. Right, we've got some sad news which has just uh, arrived to us at the moment in this evening and uh, tributes. They've been paid to Reg White, who was one of Britain's greatest yachtsmen. He's died minutes after finishing a dinghy race on the River Colne in Essex. Reg, who was 74, won gold at the 1976 Olympics. He was also a world-renowned sailor and boat builder. He collapsed minutes at the end of a race at Brightling Sea last night. A colleague said Reg was a gentleman and will be greatly missed by yachtsmen all over the world. Now, it was a sight to make any petrol head drool. Millions of pounds worth of cars taking to the roads in North Norfolk today as one man fulfilled a childhood dream. Yep, drivers from across the country congregated in Burnham Market as members of the newly formed Host Arms Supercar Club. And one car was so valuable it needed special overnight protection from a security guard, as Kate Prout found out. It's the pub car park where you really don't want to accidentally knock someone's ring mirror. The Host Arms pub today playing host to around 18 million pounds worth of wheels. I've stayed in a couple of fairly decent hotels in my time, uh, well one actually, um, but I've never stayed anywhere that's worth 8 million pounds like this rather stunning car. Matt, you spent the night with this beauty, this 8 million pound car, what was it like? Terrifying. Didn't sleep a wink. Well, this Ferrari California 250 GT is one of the most expensive cars in the world and also belongs to the broadcaster Chris Evans. So you would sleep with it overnight, wouldn't you? And it seems it's perfect for photo shoots too. I don't really know anything about cars. Apparently I've just been sitting in Chris Evans's car thing, which was lovely, and all the men were going, oh, God, that's amazing, and I don't think I even appreciate how glorious it was. Turning up in another one of those car things, former British saloon car champion Jack Sears in his Ferrari 328 to admire the car of the day. You can find a piece of antique furniture that's worth millions, a piece of silver that's worth millions, and that particular car, its rarity value, puts a several million pound marker on it. The day's gathering was the brainchild of Paul Whittam, realising a boyhood dream. It is a dream, and it was my dream, and I've loved cars since I was very young, but to have this array here is just absolutely wonderful. Finally, they're off. A convoy up the road to Houghton Hall and day two of the International Horse Trials. A very fitting backdrop for some very special cars. Kate Prout, Anglia News, North Norfolk. 
Well, earlier in the programme, Becky was with the bees and blooms at the Anglia allotment. Let's head back there to find out how the rest of the allotment is looking at the moment. Becky, tell us more. Yeah, well, we've had the blooms. Now we've got some blooming nice veg everywhere you look at the moment. It's positively flourishing. It's quite incredible considering we've had some tough weather recently for gardeners. Eric Philbert, you can account for that, can't you? I mean, what on earth has been going on with the weather? Well, as you know, the, uh, the cold has lasted far longer than we thought, and I lost a few uh, potatoes just a couple of weeks ago, but mm. everything's coming together now. It doesn't got seem to have affected you. Superb garlic, onion, and shallots just there. So this is, I was going to say, what, what are you growing either side of your carrots, but actually it's... No, it's either side of the garlic, so I've got, <laughs> um, I've got some uh, carrots just in the middle yeah. there because uh, I run out of space. So I just thought, why not try some carrots in the, between the garlic? Yeah. And the, uh, the smell of the garlic is supposed to uh, get rid of the, uh, the carrot fly. So it's like a sort of organic pest control. Absolutely, yeah. A bit like that little ladybird there. Yeah. <laughs> now, apparently, it's not too late to start growing carrots. So, come in here, my darling. This is Shirley. This is Eric's daughter. You are going to show us how to sow some carrot seeds, aren't you? So, what are you, what are you going to do here? You've got your seeds. All you've got to do yeah. is do a hole, then put the seeds, and then cover them up and water them a little bit. And it's that easy? OK, well, I trust you. You get on with that while I talk to the camera, if that's all right. I'm going to talk about a few of your lovely emails and letters that you've been sending us. Susan Fletcher, the head teacher of King George VI Primary in Great Bircham, near Kingsland, says, We are passionate about recycling, so much so that we've even built our own greenhouse out of fizzy drinks bottles. Do you like it? Like it, Mrs Fletcher? We love it. Uh, Brian Shatford wrote to us recently, Please, can you show my dearest mother's garden? It would really make her day, as she always, always watches your show. Well, Jan Calcutt also emailed to say, if you live in the Rushton area, the Washbrook Road section of the Rushton Allotment and Small Holding Society, well, they're having an open day. So if you're in the area, get down there. It's the 26th of June, that's a Saturday, and it's from 11 till 4 o'clock. Now, we had a lovely letter here from a lady called Christine uh, from Milton Keynes, and uh, she said... Please, could you ask the allotment tenant, this is the last time we were here, how he got the hole in the bottom of his lemonade bottles. If you remember, we were making bird scarers. Well, Christine, we went one better than that. And we didn't just ask him, we sent our cameras back down here. And if you look on the website, www.itv.com forward slash angler, you'll see a step-by-step -step guide as to how to make a bird scarer. Now, how are you getting on there, Shirley? Oh, you finished. It really was that easy. Well done. Now, I can see uh, Rachel's busy over there. Is she eating lettuces or is she going to do weather? I'm not sure, but we'll find out in a minute. First of all, let's hear from Alan Titchmarsh. Here's his latest gardening tip for us. The Anglia allotment in May. This is a wonderful month. It's a little milder than it was in April, not quite so tempestuous. The weather doesn't vary quite as much, and stuff is now growing at a rate of knots. Just remember to try and keep on top of the weeding, gently, little by little, 15 minutes a day, and keep on sowing things for succession. That way, you'll end up spreading your season of interest and also your harvest right the way through the summer. Yes, well, as Alan Titchmarsh was saying, regularly weeding just for 15 minutes a day and regularly planting seeds in your garden can make a massive difference. Now, Sandra and Janet have been planting these salad leaves. Now, they look delicious. Is it easy to do? Could anyone have a go? Yes, it's very easy to do. All you do is just sprinkle the seeds over, dampen compost, and then you just sprinkle some more compost on the top, cover it with the lid, and it's all done and ready. Well, it looks easy enough. Now, these are the ones that we made earlier. How long did it take to get to this stage? These were sown two weeks ago. These are ready to eat, and they were sown a month ago. So it's much better than buying from the supermarket. Well, it looks delicious. Hopefully, we'll get to have a nibble a little bit later on. It has been a glorious day here today, but unfortunately, it's all changed into tomorrow. Let's take a look at the details. And that's just about it from everyone here at the Anglia Allotment for this month. Thank you to Abby and the Lane family, to Eric and Shirley, and to Janet and Sandra and Rachel, of course. Have I missed anyone out? I don't think I have anyone. We're all going to eat this produce now, so dig in, everybody. And Jonathan, I hear that you're actually getting off the couch and coming down here next month. Well, well done. Well, thank you very much. I know there's free food. I'll be down there sooner than that. That sounds perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to everyone down there for that. But actually, of course, once again, I've been slightly misquoted, haven't I? They say I've been a bit lazy, but actually, we've got a bit of proof that I have been hard at it, haven't I? Finally. <laughs> yeah, we'll take a look at this, because this is our own little mini allotment here at the Anglia Studios. You see there, that's, that's proper hard work, isn't it? 
There you are, going pretty well, if not so so myself. I have had some help, I do have to admit it, but that's those are the herbs there, you see, Victoria. It is nice to see you doing a bit of work for the change. Last time yeah. you left Becky to do it all right. Well, I, I, I think just guidance, I think that's what it was. <laughs> those are the tomatoes, they're coming along nicely as well at the moment. And we've got the tomatoes in there, the strawberries did suffer a little bit. I did kill off a few lettuces as well, but uh, it is beginning to look quite good, I think, actually. I'm going to get my little green, soft, chubby fingers down to the allotment. Be but, very scared down there. There's some it. nice weather yeah. as well, I, I like uh, Becky's been having. Now, just before we go, best of luck to 19 year old Josh DeBobie from Basildon in tomorrow's Eurovision Song Contest in Oslo. Josh is the UK entry that uh, he's going to sing Sounds Good to Me in front of 23,000 people that's in the stadium worldwide, an audience of more than 100 million. Yeah, he won a national competition to find our entry in the annual contest. So good luck to him. And we're back on Monday. See you then. Goodbye. Bye -bye.